So at Zakaria 710, we have some more of these ethical reminders. Let's, let's hear what they are. Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless, the alien or the poor. Let none of you plan evil in his heart against his brother. So four classes are pointed out. The alien, the poor, the widow, and the fatherless. These are classes with minimal power. And a lot of times they get singled out for adventure from bullies. Bullies can't hardly keep themselves from oppressing somebody and they often look for the weakest. And those are the ones they usually press on the first. There are plenty of spiritual bullies. There's no shortage of spiritual bullies outside and sometimes inside. Since these groups can't often mount any serious opposition, they're usually the first targets for the bully. A bully is always ready to show his inclination. Just give him the right opportunity. You'd think that the last thing you'd find in spiritual leadership in a church would be a bully. But you'd be mistaken. There are always those who feel that they're in a position to do what's expedient. Not what's right, but what's expedient. What, it's not about the ideals of the movement. It's not about the beliefs of the church. It's not about what Jesus teaches. It's about, hey, I'm in charge now, and I've got an idea, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to force my idea down on people. They think that the call of leadership to them means bending rules and breaking ideals, and the, the rules don't apply to them. But you know, the call to leadership is never a call to bully others, ever. It's, there's, there's not a time. Look at the example of Jesus. Look at the example of Moses. Look at the example of the prophet Jeremiah. I mean, go through. There's nobody in the Bible where you get this example that being a leader means you, you slap other people around. On the contrary, the call to leadership is a call to work within the parameters that God has set up, and God always sets up the parameters. God hasn't abdicated or uh, assigned these, uh, these tin pot leaders to be in charge. As he's called us to be submitted to himself, He has called these leaders to be submitted to him. So we, we look for godly leaders, we support godly leaders, but that doesn't mean we park our brain back here in the alley and, leave and, and just do what we're told. It doesn't mean we deposit the Bible somewhere else and just forget about what God said there. It doesn't mean we take the teachings of Jesus and say, well, those, those are for some other weird time and place, but not for our time and place. Hey, our time and place is always time to implement the teachings of Jesus. Zacharia so says, don't plan evil against your brother. And yet a lot of times that's what these spiritual dictators do. They, they are out there planning uh, how they can throw their weight around, who they can force to do their thing. And they're, they're acting the, the part of the, the bad guy. Well, why in the world would anybody do that? When a spiritual bully goes against God's servants, you know, he's really, he's really slapping Christ around. When he slaps around one of Christ's servants, he's slapping Christ around. My advice is don't do such a thing. Yeah, that, that could end pretty badly. That's not in God's plan. God's principles are unchanging. And we're never to use these, these kind of principles. Oppression is never to be practiced, neither against a powerless person or somebody who has some degree of power. It's just not in the list of things that we do. So yes, among, uh, among unbelievers, we wouldn't be surprised, but among believers, we shouldn't see this. So here's the, here's the thing, and what, what's an action step for us? Well, check yourself really close and make sure that you are not among the oppressors. God bless you, we'll see you tomorrow morning.